did you get in the shipbuilding business, Gavin? I married into it. Very interesting business. No, to be honest, I find it dull. Well, you don't have to do it for a living. No, but one assumes responsibilities. My wife's family is all gone. Someone has to look after her interests. Her father's partner runs the company yard in the east, Baltimore. So I decided, as long as I had to work at it, I'd come back here. I've always liked it here. How long have you been back? Almost a year. You like it, huh? Well, San Francisco's changed. The things that spell San Francisco to me are disappearing fast. Like all these? Yes, I should have liked to have lived here then. Color, excitement, power, freedom. Uh, shouldn't you be sitting down? No, no, I'm all right. I was sorry to read about that thing in the paper. And you've quit the force. Is it a permanent physical disability? No, no. It just means that I can't climb stairs that are too steep or go to high places, like the bar at the top of the mark. But there are plenty of street-level bars in this town. Would you like a drink now? No, I don't think so. No, it's a little early in the day for me. Well, I guess that just about covers everything, doesn't it? I never married. I don't see much of the old college gang. I'm a retired detective, and you're in the shipbuilding business. Now, what's in your mind, Gavin? I asked you to come up here, Scotty knowing that you'd quit detective work. But I wondered whether you'd go back on the job as a special favor to me. I want you to follow my wife. No, it's not that. We're very happily married. Well, then... I'm afraid some harm may come to her. From whom? Someone dead. Scotty, do you believe that someone out of the past, someone dead, can enter and take possession of a living being? No. If I told you that I believe this has happened to my wife, what would you say? Well, I'd say take her to the nearest psychiatrist or psychologist or neurologist or psycho... or maybe just the plain family doctor. I'd have him check on you, too. Then you're of no use to me. I'm sorry I wasted your time. Thanks for coming in, Scotty. I, uh, I didn't mean to be that rough. No, it sounds idiotic, I know. And you're still the hard-headed Scott, aren't you? Always were. You think I'm making it up? No. I'm not making it up. <laughs> I wouldn't know how. She'll be talking to me about something. And suddenly, the words fade into silence. A cloud comes into her eyes, and they go blank. She's somewhere else, away from me, someone I don't know. I call to her, she doesn't even hear me. Then, with a long sigh, she's back, looks at me brightly. Doesn't even know she's been away, can't tell me where or when. Well, how often does this happen? More and more in the past few weeks. And she wanders. God knows where she wanders. I followed her one day. Watched her coming out of the apartment. Someone I didn't know. She even walked a different way. She got into her car and drove out to Golden Gate Park. Five miles. Sat by the lake, staring across the water at the pillars that stand on the far shore. You know, portals of the past. Sat there a long time without moving. I had to leave, get back to the office. When I got home that evening, I asked her what she'd done all day. She said she'd driven out to Golden Gate Park and sat by the lake, that's all. Well? The speedometer on her car showed that she'd driven 94 miles. Where did she go? I've got to know, Scotty, where she goes and what she does before I get involved with doctors. Well, have you talked to the doctors at all about that? Yes, but carefully. I want to know more before committing her to that kind of care. Scotty. All right, I'll get you a firm of private eyes to follow her for you. They're dependable, good boys. I want you. Look, this isn't my line. 
Scotty, I need a friend. Someone I can trust. I'm in a panic about this. I'm supposed to be retired. I don't want to get mixed up in this darn thing. Look, we're going to an opening of the opera tonight. We're dining at Ernie's first. You can see her there. Ernie's.